Have you ever lost your voice? Think about that. Have you ever lost your voice? Now, I don't mean have a scratchy throat or a little bit of a crackle. I mean completely lose your voice. No audible sound at all. That had never happened to me. And I tell you what, recently, as recently as a week ago, I lost my voice. Had a board meeting on a Tuesday night, woke up on a Wednesday, no connection to the board meeting. I could not say a word. I mean, I was barely squeaking out any, any audible sound at all. It was very frightening and it was concerning. I will tell you, I'm not sure my family was quite as frightened, but I certainly was. And that went on for a couple of days. One of those days was the day that I was supposed to come here to this very stage and practice for this event. And I have to tell you, um, I thought, oh my goodness, how inspiring can I be if I don't even have a voice, okay? Fortunately, as you can tell, my voice has come back a week later. But when I thought about the, the possibility of trying to even do this without a voice, um, it, it brought me to the thought about how do you inspire if you don't have a voice? Can you inspire if you don't have a voice? Well, interestingly enough, as I was debating that in my head, the week before that, I had the unique opportunity to introduce a keynote speaker at a very large conference. This conference was held in nearby Austin, Texas, and I was able to introduce Marley Matlin. Do you remember Marley? Marley is the deaf actress who has, she's an Academy Award winner. She won for Children of a Lesser God. She has gone on to win several other awards and been in several TV shows. You might remember her from um, Switched at Birth. She has been on Dancing with the Stars, a Celebrity Apprentice, and right now she's working on Quantico. So I had a few minutes where I could spend with Marley before she went out, enjoyed um, getting to know her through her interpreter, and then she came out and without saying a word, for an hour, she inspired thousands of people. So it made me kind of think about inspiration. Where does inspiration come from? Marley's message, her passion, didn't need a single word. She had her translator, but everyone in the room, and I mean probably seven or 8,000 people, were able to hear her message. Initially, I thought, that's an interesting keynote speaker. I'm not sure I see the connection between Academy Award winner and an educational technology conference keynote. I tell you what, a few minutes into that one hour and it was clear to me that you can inspire people with your story at any time. What is inspiration? This is the audience participation part. I'd like for you to close your eyes for just a minute. Don't fall asleep, just close your eyes. I want you to think about the word. What is inspiration? It means something different to all of us. Keep your eyes closed. How do you inspire? What do you do to inspire others? What inspires you? Okay, so open your eyes. You've heard a lot of wonderful stories, and I too want to share a little bit about my story. Don't be ashamed of your story. It just might inspire someone. Sometimes you really never know the impact that your own story may have on someone. One of the things I learned about Marley was that we have a few things in common. The first is we were born at the same time. We were both born in 1966. Um, we also both have had hearing issues. So I'm gonna share my story with you. In 1966, I was born in Keensville, Texas to two loving parents. I was the second child to, uh, for my parents. And so they knew the natural projection of language development and language cognition because they had had an older, uh, I have an older sibling. My mother, a nurse, recognized pretty quickly that things weren't quite progressing as they should and took me in as an infant, okay? And so the doctor gave that information to them that no parent wants to hear. And unfortunately at that time they were told that I had a severe profound hearing loss that was a conductive hearing loss. So the difference between a sensory neural and a conductive is this was not involving the nerves. 
So my parents very quickly jumped into what can we do now mode, and I started the intense life training with a speech pathologist that continued up to the age of 17 when I had an ossicular chain implant. So now think about that. Who inspired me? Well, certainly my parents. My mother's mantra from the time I can remember was always, never let a disability become an inability. One of the things she taught me was always, always, always do your best and work hard. You may have to work harder than other people, but you will be happy in the end. I was very, very young when that was ingrained into my mind. So my family network supported me. I was fine as a toddler. I was fine as a preschool child. It wasn't until I hit public education, an entity that is near and dear to my heart. When I entered public education, remember I said I was born in 66. So I entered school before IDEA became IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. So there was not actually a policy or a law protecting me so that my parents didn't have to do that. My mother was what I consider to be a parent advocate before I even knew what that term was. But I remember her saying, look, I know she does it here like all other students, but I also know she's very bright. So I was that child, and trust me, every educational system has children just like me that qualify for gifted and talented and special education. So again, the inspiration of a parent, of a mother, to say, no, you cannot put her in a specialized classroom because I want her to be educated with her non-disabled peer group to the highest extent possible. It was that important. The inspiration for me continued with teachers, with speech pathologists, with people that always told me what was inside my head from a young child, my mother saying, never let your disability become your inability. So I want to remind everybody that's connected to education to remember to never limit any child because you never know their potential if we give them all the tools they need to be successful. So think about percentage-wise. What would the chances be for that same child to grow up through a system that initially wanted to have me in a specialized classroom? What are the chances of that child to grow up and become that district superintendent? Probably pretty slim, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that it can happen and that it did happen, okay? But I sometimes think to myself, what if? You can't always live in the life of what if, right? But what if? What if my mother had not done what she did and advocated and my father? What if the teachers didn't have that belief in me, didn't inspire me to work harder, to work longer, to continue to pursue? Inspire. It's a very, very important word to remember. When you closed your eyes for me a minute ago and you thought about how you inspire, who you inspire, when you inspire, remember that power. The power for creating a better future is contained in the present moment. Today, we are creating the tomorrow. You create a good future by creating a good present. As a school district administrator, a superintendent, every single day, I believe we have the power to inspire and the power to revolutionize education to make a difference. When I look at what the classroom of the past looked like, and then I look at our classroom of today, it inspires me because I know as educators and as individuals, we are working together to revolutionize, to have what the next classroom will look like. One of my mantras is instruction drives construction. And staff that I work with hear that often because they know I believe that we are building schools today for a better tomorrow because our classrooms do not look like this and will not always look like that. Let's talk about revolutionizing and things that have changed. I recently had to make a trip to Washington. Night before last, I flew up. It was a very quick. Flew up one day, came back the next. The minute I landed, I did something that many of us do. I reached for my smartphone, I pulled up an app, and I ordered an Uber. Let's go back many years, 25 years. If I had said, oh, I got to the airport, I reached, got my iPhone, or my smartphone, and I had an app, and I called an Uber, 
people would be looking at me like, smartphone? App? Isn't that something you have before dinner? Um, and, and Uber, what is that? Well, in the future, we need to remember that we are creating, we are educating and creating the opportunities for positions that children will have that we don't even know exist today. And that is so very important when we think about education. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Think about that. Unfortunately, recently, weapons have become a part of education, and I believe they have no part in education. But it is a weapon. It is the most powerful weapon that we can use to change the world. When I think about revolutionizing education, I think about drone delivery, augmentative reality. I think about prosthetic arms that are being made with 3D printers where children themselves are having the opportunity to make these type of prosthetics. Um, I think about coding um, and really, really augmented STEM reality for children. There's digital storybooks um, and, of course, e-books on steroids. The future is something that we don't fully even understand today, but we are preparing our children for their future, for positions, for words and terms and ideas that we can't even comprehend. The capacity to learn is a gift, the ability to learn is a skill, and the willingness to learn is a choice. Learning is a choice. It is a gift, it is a skill, and it is a choice. Remember, nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. Every one of you, every person has a story. Tell it proudly and remember, possibilities are, are always, always there for everyone. Why do we revolutionize, learn, and inspire? Inspiration, revolutionize, and learn. This is why, because of these children. Krista McCullough said before her ill-fated challenger mission, I touch the future, I teach. She also said, education is the profession that makes all other professions possible. This is why. This is why we inspire, revolutionize, and learn. Thank you very much.